Yo, basketball this week has been crazy. Draymond tried to join the UFC with a spinning back fist at Yusuf Nurkic. Giannis was ready to crash out over the game ball. And then Anthony Edwards got a girl pregnant and then paid 100 racks so that she could get a you-know-what. I don't think I can say it on YouTube. Welcome back to another installment of Basketball This Week, or BTW for short. A series in which I recap highlighted moments from the NBA, whether it be player moments, team moments, or just drama breaking surrounding the league. With all that being said, let's get into Monday's games, starting with the Philadelphia 76ers and the Washington Wizards. And this game was boring. The Philadelphia 76ers absolutely smacked them 146 to 101 and continues to show that the Wizards are a bottom feeder of this league. Only one team is worse than them and we all know who that is. Speaking positively on this night though, Joel Embiid had 34, 10, and 6, showing how dominant he has been these last few weeks. For the second game of the night, we had the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers, in which the Orlando Magic continued to dominate the Eastern Conference as they won 104 to 94. And Paulo damn near might be in some MVP conversations. Tonight he had 20 and 10, and just to remind y'all, he's in his sophomore season. We really need to put some respect on Paolo's name. Moving on to the next game of the night, we had the Pacers and the Detroit Pistons, in which the Pacers continue to dominate and the Pistons continue to do the opposite. Tyrese Halliburton had 14 and 16 tonight, and Benedict Matherin had a 38 and 7 game. Detroit needs to free my go of Swar Thompson off that damn roster. For the next game of the night, we had the Nuggets coming off a two game losing streak play the Atlanta Hawks, and the Nuggets actually won tonight 129 to 122, due in part to a 29 point performance from Jamal Murray, as well as a solid performance from Jokic. Moving on from that, the next game of the night was the Miami Heat versus the Charlotte Hornets, in which the Miami Heat were without Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. But that was no problem for them as they won 116 to 114. And well, I didn't watch this game, so when I went on YouTube to search and rewatch this game, I saw this picture of Jimmy Butler yet again as the thumbnail. Can we please move away from this picture? It's pissing me off. Then we had the New York Knicks and the Toronto Raptors, in which the Knicks won 136 to 130 off of a 34, 8, and 5 game from Julius Randle, showing that he's not washed anymore, and he's making a little comeback in the season after starting it horribly. The OKC Thunder beat the Jazz 134 to 120 despite a 30 point game from Keontae George. And then the Rockets beat the Spurs 93 to 82. Fun that we have actually a really interesting game in which the Pelicans won 121 to 107, and Zion dropped 36, 5, and 2. I mean, I'm telling you, the only explanation is he must have heard all that shit Stephen A was talking. Stephen A was going crazy talking about he doesn't eat at the buffet, he eats the buffet. And when he takes a deep breath, his belly bounces. I'm glad Zion didn't take that disrespect because that shit was actually crazy. Moving on, the Dallas Mavericks beat the Memphis Grizzlies 120-113 off the heels of a 35-8-6 and six performance from Luka Doncic. For the next game of the night, we had the Bulls and the Milwaukee Bucks, in which DeMar DeRozan hits this nice layup in overtime, but they still lose an OT. Giannis dominated this game with 32-12, and 12, and the Milwaukee Bucks won 133-129. It was very unfortunate because Kobe White and DeMar DeRozan came out to hoop that night, with DeRozan 41-11 and Kobe White 33-6. and 6. Following that, the beam got lit as the Kings hit 25 threes on their way to beat the Brooklyn Nets 131-118, to and De'Aaron Fox had another almost 30-point game. This shit means something to me, man. Then for the last game of the night, the Clippers beat the Portland Trail Blazers 132-127 to after Kawhi dropped 34-6-5. For the first game of the night, we had the Los Angeles Lakers and the Dallas Mavericks, and this game was a banger. The Dallas Mavericks beat them 127 to 125, and Luka Doncic had 33, 17, and 6. But if you really watch this game, you know the real hero of the night was Dante Exum. You heard me right. Dante Exum, the 2K15 legend. In a tight fourth quarter, Dante Exum scored 17 points, five of those being three pointers. This guy was straight lighting it up. The comeback of Dante Exum needs to be studied, I'm telling you. Moving on from that game, we had the Celtics and Cavaliers, in which the Celtics won 120 to 113. And moving on from that game, we had the Nuggets and the Bulls, in which Nikola Jokic got an insane ejection that he did not deserve at all. The rest of these past few weeks have been utter dog shit. I'm telling y'all, we, we need to get an investigation going or something, because I'm getting pissed off. Despite the Nikola Jokic ejaculation, the Nuggets still won 114 to 106 after Reggie Jackson dropped a masterclass of 25 and 6. Even though they lost, shout out Kobe White, he's been killing it. Moving on from that we had the phoenix suns and the golden state warriors in a game a lot of people have been talking about but not for the actual basketball they're talking about it because draymond green signed up for the ufc and hit him with a spinning back fist yusuf nurkic did not deserve this he straight up assaulted this man because he was tugging on his jersey and in the post game press conference he said he didn't mean to do it it was an accident and if he did do it on purpose he would have said it like he usually does that is some straight menace shit 
As I'm recording this right now, I have no idea what the suspension for Draymond Green is going to look like, but I'd have to assume it's going to be pretty long considering that he already got suspended earlier in the year for choking Rudy Gobert out. But to talk about the actual game, it was a really good one and it came down to the wire as the Phoenix Suns won 119-116 and Booker dropped 32, 7, and 4. Then for the final game of the night, we had the least interesting one as my Kings got absolutely destroyed by the Clippers, 119 to 99. And I'm telling you, this game was a lot worse than what the box score says. The Kings were getting blown out by like 40 at one point, but at least Kawhi Leonard had himself a game as he dropped 31. Now, with all of that being said, let's move on to Wednesday. For Wednesday's games, our first game of the night was the Pelicans and the Wizards, in which the Pelicans won 142-122 to 122 off a 40-point game from Brandon Ingram. For our next game of the night, we had the Philadelphia 76ers and the Detroit Pistons, in which the 76ers won 129-111, to 111, but you could probably already predict that. What you can't predict is a 41-point game, 11 rebound, and 5 assist game for Joel Embiid, yet again continuing his dominance. Moving on, we have the Raptors facing the Atlanta Hawks, in which the Raptors won 135-128, to 128, and Scotty Barnes had himself a 27, 10, and 6 game, and then Pascal Siakam had himself a 33, 7, and 7 game. Future Sacramento King right there. Then the Heat beat the Hornets, and the Lakers beat the Spurs, led by a 37, and 10 game from Anthony Davis. Now we move on to the most drama-filled game of the night, being the Pacers and Bucks. Giannis had the most disgusting game of his career and beat the Bucks' all-time points record in a game with 64 points, and he also had 14 rebounds to go along with it, all coming together in a 140-126 victory against the Pacers. Just what a historic night from Giannis. I'm sure he got the game ball after that franchise-shattering game. Wait, the Pacers got that shit? Yeah, so somebody on the Pacers, I think one of the assistant coaches, actually took the game ball because one of their rookies scored their first point. But Giannis didn't know that, and he was ready to crash out about that shit, and ran into the Pacers tunnel, came back out, started yelling at Tyrese Halliburton and Rick Carlisle. Like, this shit was crazy. Giannis was ready to die behind that game ball. Nobody on the Pacers wanted to press him back, so they did what any normal organization would do in that situation, and give him the game ball. But according to Giannis, they gave him a fraudulent game ball because that shit didn't feel like the one in the game, according to him. So the Pacers did what they had to do in that situation and sign a former NBA player, now a UFC fighter, James Johnson. They are not getting pressed out the game ball again, I'm telling you that. And since we're on the tangent of drama, we gotta talk about Draymond got indefinitely suspended for the rest of the season until he gets some sort of help. I don't know what help in particular, but they're acting like this dude needs to be locked up in an insane asylum or something the way they're talking about him. Like Nurkic said, that brother needs help. Following that, we have the Houston Rockets play the Memphis Grizzlies in which the Rockets won 117-104 to 104 after a Tari Eason masterclass of 25-14. and 14. Moving on, despite a Julius Randle masterclass, the Knicks lost to the Utah Jazz 117-113. to 113. And to end out the night, the Brooklyn Nets beat the Phoenix Suns 116-112 off a of Cam Thomas 24-point game. I can't believe this dude was barely playing at all last year. Now, time for Thursday's games. Moving on to Thursday, the first game of the night was the Boston Celtics versus the Cleveland Cavaliers in which the Boston Celtics won 116-107 after Jason Tatum dropped 27-11. and For the next game of the night, we had the Chicago Bulls versus the Miami Heat in which the Chicago Bulls actually won 124-116 off the heels of a 26-11-7 performance from Kobe White. Bulls fans finally had something to be slightly excited about. Following that, we had the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Dallas Mavericks in which the Timberwolves won 119-101 because everyone's favorite player, Nas Reed, dropped 27-6. And Cat also had a pretty good game. The the Nuggets then faced the Brooklyn Nets in which the Nuggets finally got back on track with a 124-101 victory with Nikola Jokic dropping 26, 10, and 15. Moving on from that game, we had in my personal opinion the most exciting game of the night, the Kings vs Oklahoma State Thunder in which Shea and De'Aaron were straight going at it. They both had 40 plus points with De'Aaron having 41 and 7 and then Shea having 43, 9, and 6. Shout out that boy Keon Ellis for the Kings though. If you're not a Kings fan, you probably don't know who that is, but he was going crazy tonight. I need this comment section full with common Keon Ellis W. Moving on, we have the Jazz beat the Trailblazers 122 to 114, and then we had the Warriors and Clippers. Klay Thompson had one of his first good games of the season with 30 points, but it didn't matter as the Clippers still won 121 to 113. Because of a James Harden masterclass, oh my god, 28, 15, and 7. Y'all need to stop sleeping on this Clippers team. That is six wins in a row for them. And I remember all y'all were talking shit on this Clippers team, saying Harden isn't the system, or just saying you all you're just doubting him. But they have a team with James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George. If you don't think that team is gonna make at least a little, little, little bit of noise if they're healthy during playoffs, you're straight up insane. This could be one of my worst takes of the season, but I want everyone to record this shit right now so y'all can tweet this at me if I'm wrong. I think the Clippers are going to make it to the Western Conference Finals. That's my bold prediction for the season. But that about rounds up the game for Thursday night, so let's move on to Friday.
For Friday's first game of the night, with the Pelicans taking on the Hornets, in which Jonas Valanciunas dropped 29 and 13 in a 112 to 107 victory over the Hornets. Then the Wizards got their fourth win of the season over the Pacers, 137 to 123 off of a Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma masterclass, they both had 30. The Pistons weren't as lucky as they still only have two wins on the season and lost 124 to 92 after Joel Embiid dropped 35 on them. The Hawks blew out the Raptors 125 to 104 after Trey Young dropped 38 and 11. Then the Celtics beat the Magic 128 to 111. Then moving on with most of the team out for the Lakers besides LeBron and like Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura, the Lakers suffered and lost to the San Antonio Spurs 129 to 115 giving the Spurs their fourth win of the season, and Devin Vassell had 36 and 6 on the night. The next game of the night was the Grizzlies versus the Houston Rockets, in which Dylan had his return to Memphis. In his return, he dropped 26 and 7 on the night, including a dagger 3 to win the game. Final score was 103 to 96, and that concludes Friday's games for the NBA. And as you can tell, there were a lot of blowouts. On to Saturday. For Saturday's first game of the night, we had one that really doesn't need to be talked about all that much because the Bucks went against the Pistons and you could probably predict the outcome, 146 to 114. Absolutely disgusting. Following that, we had an even more disgusting game as the Philadelphia 76ers took on the Charlotte Hornets and won 135 to 82. Absolutely rancid. Joel Embiid had 42 and 15 this game. Moving on, despite a 35 and 10 game from Trey Young, the Cleveland Cavaliers beat the Atlanta Hawks 127 to 119. Then the Pacers got blown out by the Timberwolves 127 to 109 in an absolute Carl Anthony Towns masterclass as he had 40 and 12. He's not a cat, he's a dog. Then we had the Miami Heat and the Chicago Bulls in which the Miami Heat won 118 to 116 off the heels of a 28 point performance from Jimmy Butler, including this game winner at the very end of it. The Heat were without Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero, but it didn't matter because they had Hawkins Jr. I don't think I've talked about at all in any basketball this week video but he's proven to be an integral piece to this heat roster in just his first season in the nba proving to be a rookie of the year candidate and just showing that he's a dog overall for the next game tonight with the brooklyn nets and the golden state warriors in which the nets lost 120 to 124 despite a 40 point game from cam thomas Stephen Curry had 37 on the night. Moving on, we had probably the greatest game of the night as the OKC Thunder took on the Denver Nuggets and they won 118 to 117 off a game winner from Shea, which was a fadeaway free throw line jumper. This shit was smooth as hell. Not to mention that Chet Holmgren had 17, 11, and 9. And the 9 being blocks, not assists. Oh my god, he's him. The Mavericks then beat the Trailblazers 131 to 120 after a 40 point triple double from Luka Doncic. Then moving on, we have the Sacramento Kings and the Utah Jazz in a game where a lot of history was broken, specifically by my GOAT Keegan Murray man. Keegan Murray had 47 and eight on the night and you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's impressive, but where's the history? Well, he started the game 11 and 11 from three and before the third quarter ended, he had 12 threes on 13 attempts showing that he could go for the record, but then he got benched most of the fourth quarter and then didn't hit a three when he finally got in in the fourth. So. He didn't break anything. Well, he did break the NBA record for most consecutive threes made in a row as he hit 11 of them in a row. And then he also broke the record as he hit 12 threes and on the night, which is a franchise record for the Kings. Needless to say, the Kings beat the Jazz 125 to 104. Then the Clippers blow the Knicks 144 to 122, extending it to seven wins in a row for the Clippers now. They're looking dangerous. And so is Kawhi as he's been having a monstrous streak and he continued that tonight with 36, 7, and 4. But that about rounds up Saturday's game, so let's move on to Sunday's. Sunday's game started off with two blowouts I want to skip over, that being the Celtics and Magic and the Pelicans and Spurs, in which the Celtics beat the Magic 114 to 97, and then the Pelicans beat the Spurs 146 to 110. Disgusting. Then, moving on, we had the Bucks versus the Rockets, in which they won 128 to 119 after Damian Lillard dropped 39 and 11. For the next game of the night, we had an actual close one, as the Phoenix Suns were in competition with the Wizards, which is kind of embarrassing. But they came back heavily in the fourth quarter, scoring 31 points to the Wizards' 19, winning the game 112-1 away, and Kevin Durant had 28-5-5. Five and, five. and for the final game of the night, the Golden State Warriors won again 118-114 against the Portland Trailblazers, and you're probably wondering, oh yeah, Curry carried. Well, you're not going to believe me here, but Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins were the one that carried this team, as Curry only had 7 points and didn't hit a 3 this game, ending the longest active streak, or I think streak in history, with consecutive games with a three-pointer. Both all of that being said, that ends basketball for this week, so I'll see you all next week.